Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be doing a bit of a beginner's guide to ESO, so whether you're completely new to the game or you're a returning player, I'm going to show you what you can expect when you first start playing this game. Now I've been playing this game for um, over 9 years now, nearly 10, because I actually played, uh, I did the beta test for the, the, the devs way back when, like 10 years ago, and I've been playing this game ever since. It's I love this game and I've introduced a lot of players to this game over the years. Uh, I'm not sponsored in any way, uh, I just really love the game and I like to share it with other people. So what I'm going to show you in this video is what you can expect. And so here we are uh, at the character creation screen. So I'm just going to go over a few things here with you so that you can, you don't kind of feel a bit overfaced when you first sort of log into the game. So over here on the right hand side, obviously you can choose a male or female character, that's a given. Um, and then you have to choose an alliance. Now there's three different alliances in the game. There's the Daggerfall Covenant, the Old Mary Dominion, and the Ebonheart Pact. Now it doesn't really matter which one of these you choose, uh, except when you go into PvP. When you go into PvP, you will be fighting for your faction. So if you're fighting for, obviously if you choose a Daggerfall Covenant, then when you go into PvP, you'll be fighting on behalf of that uh, alliance. Uh, but that really is the only kind of restriction um, in terms of um, gameplay. When you're playing the actual game, uh, running around doing quests and stuff like that in the main world, uh, none of that really matters. So it's entirely your preference. There's no benefits between each of them. There's no difference. So you just ch choose literally which one you know you like the look of. Then you have to choose your race. So there's lots of different ones. So you can see here, Breton. Uh, each one gives you a little bit of a tooltip, so it tells you um, each of the different races have um, pros and cons uh, to them, and obviously it depends on what kind of character you want to create, which of these will be best suited for you. So here we're looking at the Breton. Bretons are pretty good with magic, magicka recovery and light armor. So for instance, if you're going to make a mage, a Breton might be a good choice. Um, then you have the High Elves. The Argonians, so this is your uh, lizard-like race. Uh, so if you're interested in making a character that's not human, this is an interesting one to pick. These are really good swimmers as well, by the way. Uh, they swim really, really fast. So if you're in a water zone, uh, these these are really handy. Uh, orcs are very, very uh, interesting characters. I've yet to make an orc. I might make an orc in a minute. Uh, wood elves, they are fantastic with stealth, stamina, bows, and poison. So if you're looking to make sort of like a stealthy build, these are really good, pretty good for that. Dark Elves are very good at dual wielding and uh, flame magic and, fl and, fire, and um, fire resistance. So these are an interesting choice to pick. Red Guards are fantastic sword masters. So if you're interested in building kind of like a sword and board uh, build, Red Guards are a really solid choice for that. The Khajiit, I have a soft spot for the Khajiit. My main is a Khajiit. Um, she's the first character I ever created in ESO nine years ago, and I still play her to this day. I love the Khajiit. Uh, so they are the cat race. Uh, so if you're, you know, if you're, if you're familiar with the Elder Scrolls Online, this is basically what they are. Um, and again, male and female presets for those. We'll get into what they look like in a minute when we go into uh, character creation itself. But the Khajiit are pretty good um, at stealth pickpocketing. Um, they can run a little bit faster than some of the other um, races as well. Um, and they have increased uh, health base of Magicka and Stamina, as you can see there in the tooltip. So these are a really solid uh, race to play. You don't actually see that many Khajiit running around. You'd think you'd see more of them, but you don't. And I, I really love the Khajiit, so yeah, I, I would always go Khajiit. Uh, and then Nord, uh, we've got, they're pretty good with two-handed. So if you want to be like a great axe wielding um, maniac in the game, then you know a Nord is a good choice. And then beyond all of those, you then have the Imperial. Now the Imperials are pretty, they're like a balanced choice. So if you're not really sure what to pick, um, just go with Imperial because they're pretty good with magic. They're pretty good with um, weaponry of all descriptions. And um, they also have an increased gold drop rate. So you're gonna get a little bit more gold from just going around doing normal questing if you pick an Imperial. So it might be a good one to pick if you're just starting out in the game. So you pick a race, like I said, I think I'll go Orc because I haven't made an Orc yet. Um, and then at the top here, you then have to pick your class. The six classes to choose from. So you can be a Dragon Knight, which is basically your tank class, okay? Um, they're really, really good at uh, defending and also dealing damage. Sorcerer, so that's your mage. Uh, Nightblade, which is... Um, 
I would say probably one of the trickiest classes to play. That's my main. Uh, a knight blade focuses on stealth, using blades, and uh, basically backstabbing and being quite cunning <laughs> in your gameplay. So if you're interested in something like that, then choose a knight blade. Um, I love that class, but like it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, Templar is a really easy uh, starter class to play. It, they are technically classed as the healers, but you don't have to be a healer if you choose Templar. They do do also a, a huge amount of damage if you spec them in the right way. Um, and they're really good with health and magicka. Um, if you want a pet, then um, to fight for you, uh, you get a bear if you choose to be a warden. Um, they, you get this, um, your ultimate is a bear that you can have at your side and basically fights alongside you. So if you are somebody who is maybe thinking of creating an archery build, but you want to have the support of an animal to fight at your side, then choose a warden. Uh, also, if you choose sorcerer, you can also obviously conjure pets to fight at your side as well. So they're the two kind of pet classes, warden and sorcerer. So if that's your gameplay, that's your style, then I would choose those two. And then the most recent one that we had added a few years ago is necromancer. Well, that's again a class that is a, technically a pet class because you can raise the undead to fight for you. Uh, but this one is a little bit different to the others because necromancy is outlawed in Tamriel. Uh, so if you choose this class, you cannot cast uh, any of your abilities uh, within the city walls or within the sight of a guard because you will be instantly attacked. Um, it's a criminal act. Citizens don't kind of take very well to you if you're a necromancer and they know you're a necromancer. So it just adds an extra dimension to your playthrough. So if you're interested in that, then uh, choose necromancer. Now today I decided I'm going to go with an orc, so what shall I choose? Let's go with a dragon knight. Okay, we'll make a dragon knight orc. And then you get into character creation itself. So then you have this. Now there's quite a few things that you can do here in terms of character creation, and if you're like me, you probably spend a very long time in character creation. I won't today, but I will run you through what you can do. So you have this slider, which basically changes, um, as you can see there, you can either make a very muscular character, a large character, or a very skinny one. And obviously everything in between. So you can just choose you know, where you want to put uh, your slider. You can also choose the height. So you can make them really, really tall or really, really short. I'll just go here for now. And the skin color as well. So if I can zoom in here so you can see. So you can have lots of different skin color. The skin color variants uh, do also depending on which race you've chosen. Obviously I've chosen an orc, so these are the presets for the orc play. Um, then you can have body markings. Now if you go over here to this side, if you can click no gear, it means then that you can have a look at um, what the body markings actually are. So if I just scroll through them, so you, they start off with just like a little bit of um, scarring and stuff like that. And you know, there's lots and lots and lots of different presets here. You can spend ages. It moves up into the tattoo section. So there's again, huge range of different tattoos that you can pick from. Um, and obviously there's more available once you get into the game. I won't choose any today, but they are available for you. And then you get the normal sliders that you see in a lot of games. So you can change you know, the torso size and all sorts of things. Chest size, so yeah, if you want big boobs, <laughs> on your character you can have big boobs if you want one um again gut size so again you could have a character with a really big gut if you want to or you can have one that's really, really skinny i mean again yeah these are all different things that obviously you can play around with and then again posterior dimensions is always an interesting one so that's basically your butt size so you can have a big butt or a small butt it's all entirely up to you okay i'm just going to leave them where they are for now and then finally we come to the face and again, you have one of this little triangle up here, so you can soften out the features of the face, you can make it really, really angular, or you can go full on heroic and anything in between. And obviously the more that you move this around, as you can see as I'm moving it, it changes. So again, you get something close to what you want, um, and then you can kind of work with that. There are lots of different voices that you can choose in the game for your character, so if we just play one. There's a laugh. Uh, let's choose another one. Yeah. Oh. So you basically go, you scroll through them all and pick one that you like. Uh, so we'll, we'll go for. Yeah. Oh. I'll just go with C. And then obviously you've got your hair, so you can choose lots of different hairstyles in the game. Um, short styles, long styles. There's all kinds of ones that you can go with. And again, um, I'd probably go with that one actually. 
Threats? Should I go with threats? I feel like it should be... Oh, actually, that one's kind of... Yeah, I'll go with that one. Um, I love this hair colour, by the way. This is probably one of my favourite ones. But again, there's lots of different hair colours that you can go through, which are all, um, again, uh, linked to the race. So the, the hair colours do slightly alter depending on um, uh, the race that you've chosen. You can make your character look really old if you want to. Or you can make them really young. And then there's adornments. Now, adornments are basically things like... Uh, headpieces and uh, earrings now we're not going to be able to see her earrings because obviously i've got a long head character but you get the idea so you can scroll through lots and lots of different uh pieces that you can have on uh the head so a nice little flower there i'll keep the flower in her hair um and then head markings again which is basically scars and facial tattoos and again there's a whole range of those so we'll go with that one and if you want to, you can then, from the original preset that you chose up here, you can fine tune it with things like chin size, cheek, cheekbone height and all the rest of it. So like I said, there is a plenty to do in here in terms of um, really customising your character. The eyes, I think the devs did a fantastic job with the eyes of all of the characters. They look really, really cool. Um, and you can make them, you know, she can look demonic if you want to. Um, I, yeah, so I'm just going to go with that. And again, you can change the eye squint and stuff so you can make them really wide-eyed or you can make her really sort of squinting. Um, so there's lots that you can do in terms of your character creation. And then eyebrows, of course, you can change lots of different eyebrow styles. Um, and you can make them eyebrow skewed so you can have one that goes up and one that goes down, etc. So again, loads that you can do. Change the nose, the mouth, uh, and the ears. Um, all those different things. So there's plenty of, you can do that um, in terms of um, you know what you can make your character look like. If you're interested in seeing what your class will look like when you get to max level, if you click on champion gear, um, a dragon knight orc wearing um, max level gear kind of looks like this. So it kind of gives you an idea. And obviously you can customize your gear set and the, you know, what your character looks like further more in game. Uh, but that is just to kind of give you an overview of what you will actually look like um, when you get to the end. And of course, once you've decided all of that, the only thing you have to do then is to choose a name um i'm going to try this and see if this will come up that's actually spelt wrong hang on there you go let's see if i can get this one now you'll get this now because i've obviously created a character before it's asking me if i want to skip the tutorial or if i want to actually play it so because obviously i'm doing this for new beginners i am going to play through it today just to show you what the tutorial looks like if obviously you're a returning player, you can skip this and it will put you straight into game. Okay, so let's play. Name's already in use. <laughs> We're going to get this. We're going to have this problem. Uh, let me try this. I usually default to Welsh if I'm getting problems with... Um... Was that going to go through? Are we in? I think that's worked. I usually default to something Welsh if uh, it keeps telling me that names are taken because um, there are a few people, I would guess, who are Welsh speakers who play this game. So, requesting character loads. So, here we go. Uh, Cymru Ambeth, by the way, uh, is Welsh for uh, Long Live Wales. Um, that was seemed to work. So, yeah, I now have a character called Cymru Ambeth. Um, so you end up on this Isle of Balfira. Now, this is something new that the devs added. So if you're a returning player, maybe you stopped playing a few years ago, you, this will be new to you. Um, basically, the devs completely reworked the you're intro awake. to make it a lot quicker so Thanks. that new players can like, get into the game much, much quicker. So it's everything you would expect from a tutorial. So the first thing it teaches you is obviously things like how to move, which is WASD, W-A-S-D on the keyboard. It's the usual controls. Um, interact with objects using E. There you are, on your feet. I know magical translocation can really upset the stomach. Just take a moment and get your bearings, all right? Where am I? The Isle of Balfiera, home of Clan Dorini. I apologize for the cramped accommodations. We pride ourselves on courtesy, but circumstances here have taken a turn for the bizarre. I needed to make sure you weren't a danger to yourself or others. Can you let me out? You might not be so eager to escape once you hear what's going on. You arrive via a portal, along with a deatric beast called Shiazel. It seized control of our golems and unleashed them on the island. If I free you, 
Will you help me stop Shiazel? Yes, set me free and I'll help. Wise choice. Just give me a moment. There, that should unlock the door. When you're ready, follow me. One of the great things I love about ESO is the entire game is fully voiced. Every single quest, side quest, main quest, everything is fully voiced and the voice acting in this game in my opinion is very good. It's a really high standard and it makes a huge difference. So now that we're out of the cell, as you can see at the moment I'm in first person. Again, it's entirely your option how you play. You can be first or you can be third. It's entirely up to you. Um, so we'll just go third person for now. Quest markers, as you can see, appear like that um, above uh, you know, quest givers' heads. There you are, free as a spring cricket. I hope you intend to keep your word. We'll need each other out there. Of that, I'm certain. The name's Nori Anwe, by the way, of Clan Dorini. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Where are we headed? We're bound for a place called the Key Rights Gallery. But first, I need to know you can defend yourself. Hurtling through the orbis and falling flat on your ear left you a bit scattered. Find a weapon, and we'll work out the cobwebs. Fair? Sure, but I have some questions. Of course. I can't promise total transparency, but I'll be as forthcoming as I can. You mentioned a Key Rights Gallery. What is this place? The Key Rights Gallery is an ancient substructure of Balthiera Island, built long before my clan arrived. Why is it called the Key Rights Gallery? On account of all the doors. The gallery's full of ancient gates, each with some arcane connection to places in Tamriel and beyond. Once the gates came to life, rifts opened. You fell out of one of them. The Daedra, Shiazel, emerged from another. How did you escape? I cast an incantation of the steed, snatched you up, and fled as fast as my feet would carry me. I heard the Daedra cursing, followed by some kind of explosion, but I didn't look back. I hope the gallery is still standing. What are you doing here? Nothing irresponsible, if that's what you're asking. I'm a member of Clan Dorini's intelligence guild, the Cinderil. More scholar than spy, I assure you. I was conducting some research in the gallery, then pop! You and that monster arrived. Why were you studying in this place? The gallery's always been a place of special interest for the guild. But we never quite cracked how it worked. Despite the dangers, this is our greatest breakthrough to date. The guild master will be ecstatic provided we get it under control. You said something about golems? What's going on here exactly? Would it frustrate you to hear that I have no idea? We Dureni are cautious by nature, so the Isle of Balthiera has many defences. Magical stone guardians protect many of our sacred sites, but somehow this Daedra found a way to turn them against us. Can you describe the Daedra, Shiazel? Ugh, do I have to? If I recall my studies correctly, I'd say it's a harvester. A huge serpentine creature that feeds on souls and magicka. If it finds a way to consume the energies of the gallery, we will be in very serious trouble. Okay, so we have here then a choice, okay? So we're about to enter into your basic combat tutorial, which is standard MMO fare. So each of the tables is laid out. So you've got sword and shield, you've got your great axe, a healing staff, a fire staff, daggers and your bow so obviously you can choose whichever one of these that you want you won't be locked to it when you get into game and also one of the great things about ESO is that you can play the game your way so you can be a mage and you can wield a great axe if you want to okay there's no restrictions in terms of your class or your race in terms of the weapons that you use so whatever you pick here it, you know you're not locked to it for the rest of the game uh, it's just basically to get you through the tutorial um, because I chose Dragon Knight and I'm going to be a tank, I've decided to take Sword and Shield, okay? Larger weapons like staves and great axes will take both hands to use. You can pair smaller weapons with a shield or another weapon of that size. The choice is yours. So now we need to equip it. So you hit I to open your inventory. And uh, all you have to do is to equip it, just click on it and click E. And now, yes, as you can I see over here, you. if you change your mind, feel free to take any other weapon you want. Now, let's find a spot to practice. 
you can collect all the other weapons if you want to um obviously you know it's up to you if you want to do that but yeah so once you've equipped your weapons you have your sword and your shields uh, shown here uh, when you level up a little bit later you can unlock um another a weapon set that you can equip as well and obviously this is all of your gear so your clothes and everything appear here and this is for jewelry okay obviously we don't have any of that at the moment because we're still in the tutorial so let's keep going and we'll see how combat works in this game this is as good a place as any now prepare yourself while i conjure up a dance partner let's begin quickly now strike the construct top marks impressive well done now brilliant now do it again Light attack's really Ready easy. Yourself. Quick, strike while it's off balance. That's the way. Well done. Protect yourself. Give it everything you've got. You're unnatural. Rocket strike. Strike hard now. Now. So we're teaching light attacks and heavy attacks. This tutorial is really basic, but it does give you sort of the overview of how combat Quickly, works. Break free. You ready to break free? Now back again. Now press your advantage with a heavy attack. Again, hold its attack. Swiftly now, interrupt it. When your enemy prepares an attack, good. Now destroy it. Well done. Come speak with me for a moment. Forgotten Adventurer's Breaches. So that gives us a boost to stamina that you can see there and that we gain 7% experience uh, extra when we um, kill something. So we'll take those and we'll equip them. It's gonna bind to me. And now I've got those on. So that means now that I'm gonna get 7% extra uh, experience from whatever I do. So let's uh click f now every time you level up you get these rewards an attribute point and a skill point so we're going to claim those and then over here you have choices to make so you each time you level up you can put a point into one of these and obviously you can choose whichever one you want to i'm going to go for health for this particular one uh because obviously i can building a tank so it makes sense to do that so health and stamina are probably where i'm going to put most of my uh, ability points um, but I mean you can put them wherever you want to uh, once you've decided where you want to put it you just commit the points you sure yes and then you get these um, you have to choose a skill point so as a dragon knight I have my class has ardent flame draconic power and earth and hearts and as you can see there's lots of different skills that you unlock as you level um, there's different ones so ardent flame the first one here that you unlock is lava whip so a lash an enemy with flame dealing 4203 flame damage there's dratronic power which is spiked armor so you basically um it's like a, a damage shield that you have and it increases your physical and spell resistance by 5948 for 17 seconds so like i say basically it's an armor and then earthen hearts is stone fist you crush the earth beneath you, dealing 4,203 physical damage to all enemies within 6 metres of you. Um, debris ripped from the ground is held around you for 10 seconds. So that's like a, a buff that circles around you and anything that comes into contact with that will take damage as well. Now we've only have one skill point at the moment, so we can only choose which one of these we want to do. I think I'm going to go with Stone Fist. So I'll unlock it. You can have six abilities uh, on your hotbar at any one given time. Now, because obviously I've only just got one, I have one here. So every time I hit number one on my keyboard, um, I basically will be using that skill. And you can swap out whatever's in your hotbar at will, uh, wherever you are, um, you know, you know, you don't have to go and like visit an NPC or anything to do that. You can literally do that wherever you are in the game. With moves like that, the Daedra doesn't stand a chance. Yes, I'd say we're ready to set out. Where are we headed now? 
To reach the Keyride's gallery, we have to make it out of this ruin and across a wide field full of the golems I mentioned. With any luck, we'll be able to slip past them. But I'm not all that lucky, so I'm sorry in advance. All right, we'll head there next. What can we expect to encounter in the gallery? Well, it begins with the door, the first of many. The only way to access the gallery is through a mysterious gateway. Once we pass through that initial door, we'll step into a huge vault. This is the part that worries me most. Why does it worry you? I believe Shiazel, the Daedric creature that's causing all this mischief, may have nested itself in there. So be prepared to fight. Will dealing with Shiazel pacify the golems? I can't say anything with certainty, but ridding the world of an otherworldly abomination can't hurt, right? Its influence might linger for a time, but the golems should return to normal before too long. Hopefully. So you have a choice here. If you want to complete, uh, continue practicing your combat on the golem, and obviously you can do that, but we're going to continue forward. Okay, so let's go and see what is in this gallery. Now, at the moment, if I just go into my inventory, I only have one piece of armor equipped, and as you can see, it's a medium um, armor. Now, if you have three or more pieces of... Um, the same armor equipped it gives you a buff so for instance three pieces of medium three pieces of light armor or three pieces of heavy armor then it does uh, give you a sort of a, a an armor buff um, but we're not going to worry about that too much at the moment because we've only got one particular piece of armor on us once we get into uh, the main story and get into the main uh, land we'll be fine now what we're being taught now is sneak so you hit control go into sneak mode and as you can see there um, I'm hidden. And I can do a backstab to take them by surprise. I don't think I've got any lockpicks. Okay, yeah, if I had lockpicks, I would be able to unlock this door. Lockpicking is a thing in this game, um, which is quite interesting. Oh, I love this game. It's so pretty. Almost there. Let's hurry. Shift to sprint. Standard controls. There's nothing unusual about ESO in terms of the uh, key bindings. It's uh, right. quite straightforward. The entrance to the key rides gallery should be east of here. Let's set out. Okay. Uh, you can also play this on PC with a controller. It works uh, with any Xbox controller uh, or any type of really controller. Uh, change perspectives, what they're asking me to do there is scrolling out, so you can go from per first person, obviously into third, so if you want to zoom in to have a look at something a little bit closer, you can do that, and you do that by moving the mouse wheel. Very basic combat at the moment. Very basic combat. Stone Fist has increased to rank 2, so we'll give that a go in a minute. If I can counter another enemy. Careful. Yeah, we we'll use it on this cat. So that's what Stone Fist looks like. You can see those um, lava balls that are kind of surrounding me at the moment. They actually do damage to whatever you come into contact with. Gold and iron pauldrons. We'll take those and we will equip those pauldrons because we don't actually have any heavy armor on at the moment. Uh, I will be going for heavy armor if uh, I was creating a tank, uh, which this Dragonite Orc is going to be. I think that's another player. There we go. And in we go. Let's go and see what's in this gallery. Up. 
there is an anniversary event going on at the moment which is one of the reasons why i'm making this uh video uh eso is actually free to play at the moment well, uh both on pc it. and console uh, so if you are interested in picking this up or having a go at it this is the best time to do it because it won't cost you a penny you can literally download it play it see what you think of it and um also if you decide that you want to buy the game afterwards then there is a huge sale on the game at the moment so you could probably get it for half price um so this is a really good time to try so and see whether you like it jeff's bones the surge of magicka created by the portals you came through Ugh, must have cracked this sky shard without a functioning sky shard this gate remains locked and there's no way for us to proceed. Damn. Is there any way you can fix it? Unless you have a set of enchanting tools and a working knowledge of meteoric empowerment theory. No, there's nothing for it. We need to find a replacement. Where can we find a replacement sky shard? I saw one in a vault just south of here a few days ago, but it was flanked by one of the island's more powerful golems. Normally, I'd say we should search for another option, but given the circumstances, I think we have to risk it. All right, let's find that sky shard. Can I ask you something before we set out? Of course. Let's not tarry too long, though. What are sky shards exactly? Giant clusters of meteoric glass. They fall from Aetherius, charged with raw and very potent magicka. Mages use sky shards in all kinds of rituals and experiments. We Dureni use them as a power source. What kind of golem did you see near the sky shard? It's a monstrous sentinel called a gargoyle. I've never seen one fight, but by all accounts, they are far more powerful than the golems we faced thus far. Sky shards, which we will find in a minute, are basically skill ups. Um, so whenever you see a sky shard uh, in the game, you want to click on it because it will give you a sky, uh, give you a skill point. Uh, every three you collect equates to one skill point. So you want to find them uh, wherever they are, scattered all, all over right. the map. Do you um, see that vault to the south? The sky shard is there. Uh, so we're going to go and find uh, one now so you can have a look and see what they look like. So when you're in game, you'll be able to identify one. And like I say, every three that you collect equates to a skill point, so they are worth collecting. Uh, there's quite a few on every map. There's about 20, I think. Uh, it varies between each zone, uh, but there's plenty to collect, so you're not going to be, you know, struggling. Okay, let's fight this golem. So this is what they look like, these blue shining crystals. So whenever you see one of these, you want to just click on it. And this happens. What? Did you just absorb the energy of that shard? Incredible. Not quite what I intended, but we can work with this. Let's head back to the gate. So let's run back up here. So like I said, the devs really did shorten this uh, tutorial uh, in order to get people you know, into the game as quickly as possible. So it really just teaches you the bare minimum. Yep, that's another player. <laughs> nice madness. Okay, let's go upstairs. So we're going to repair the gates using the sky shard. I'm afraid we've reached the really scary bit. The Daedric creature responsible for all these portals waits just beyond that gate. If you have any other preparations to make, make them now. Do you have any advice on how to slay this thing? Again, I'm just a scholar, but I'd encourage you to remember what we practiced before. Keep moving, strike true, and exploit any opening the creature gives you. Okay, let's go and fight this thing. There it is. Send it back to oblivion. So we've got this little mini boss that we need to fight. Wither and die. You cannot kill what cannot die. 
go. And we get a necklace and a little bit of gold. Hopefully the gallery wasn't too badly damaged. Increases your health by 888, so we'll equip that. So you can see that the yeah, the tutorial does give you some key uh, bits of equipment um, before you actually get into the uh, outside world, which is always useful. By all the stars, look at the central column. I had no idea it was concealing something like this. Let's get a closer look. Cool, let's go and have a look downstairs and we'll have a look at that column. This is the newest part of the um, tutorial, which this room is actually really cool. I'll explain now what it I is in a minute. Now I we never managed to unlock the gates. Their power comes from this arcane helix. Amazing. With the helix exposed, these gates can finally reopen. Perhaps not all of them at first, but enough to reach most of Tamriel. The question for you, I suppose, is where to first? Can you believe this? Just look around. With this arcane helix exposed, the chamber is positively crackling with magic. The Keyrite's gallery has come to life, and I finally think I know why. What do you mean? Why did it come to life? Because of you. Matters in Tamriel are bleak. War rages in Cyrodiil. Daedric princes conspire. Dragons ride the winds of elsewhere. The second era needs a savior. I believe the gallery. Perhaps even the adamantine tower itself chose you. What do you think I should do next? The Keyrite's gallery opened doors to every corner of Tamriel. Places, I suspect, that desperately need a hero's aid. This choice is yours to make, but wherever you choose to go, I'm sure adventure awaits. May the stars protect you. So at the end of the tutorial, you get this adventure strong box, which has got some equipment in it we'll look at in a minute. You get a skill point and it adds a new skill line tree to you, which is soul magic. So we'll complete that. So have you chosen where to go? What region of the world strikes your fancy? Not everyone gets to pass instantly from one side of Tamriel to another, you know. This is quite a gift. Now you can continue talking to her and she'll give you a little bit of information about some of the choices that you can now make in terms of where you start your game. But I will do a voiceover version of that verse because it's a lot quicker than uh, obviously going through all of her quest dialogue. Um, so we're going to claim those rewards first because we've leveled up now. As you can see we are level 3 so before you even get into the main game doing this tutorial it takes you to level 3 which is handy. So again, another attribute point, another skill point, and um, the devs give you kind of a little reward each time. So we've got basically a buff there. Uh, it increases your health, magicka, and stamina for two hours, which is cool, so we'll claim that. And then we also want to put our points into here. So I put one into health last time. I'm going to choose stamina this time. Always remember to commit to your points at the bottom. It won't save. And then it'll ask you to confirm. And now we've got two skill points to put in. And you can see now that because I have a sword and shield equipped, that skill line has now all um, opened up for me. If you had equipped a bow, then obviously the bow skill line would now be open for you, etc. Um, so I'm gonna choose the first skill here, which is puncture. Uh, it basically means that I can do a bit more damage with uh, my sword. So I'm gonna take that and I've equipped it into, it auto equips into the next available slot on your bar. And then we have this soul magic. Now this was auto um, given to us at the end of the tutorial. This basically, um, the system in Elder Scrolls Online, when you die, you can resurrect yourself wherever you died, okay? But you need a soul gem in order to be able to do that. Now they're really easy to acquire, they're all over the world. Uh, you're not gonna struggle to get hold of one. Um, if you pick up an empty soul gem, you need this ability um, in order to be able to fill that soul gem with a soul that you can then use to resurrect yourself later. So if you look at this, it says soul trap, lay claim to an enemy soul dealing 8,327 magic damage over 20 seconds. So I can equip this to my bar if I want, 
and every time you uh, use that ability it does do damage to your enemy when you level this up later it also um, will fill uh, automatically fill an empty soul gem that happens to be in your inventory uh, you can also find filled soul gems as well that everywhere you can buy them I think from uh, merchants as well so you're not going to struggle to find any but you do need some in your inventory in order to be able to resurrect yourself where you are otherwise you need to travel to a way shrine um, in order to do that so that's just basically what this skill line is um, uh, soul summons uh, that's basically the ability to uh, revive yourself every two hours without spending a soul gem so the first time you die for instance in the day you don't need a soul gem you can res automatically um, but it has a cooldown uh, for two hours okay so you wouldn't be able to do that again for two hours after that uh, now I've never have got another one so let's use a different one so I'm gonna go with the lava whip so now I've got a couple of different uh, abilities now on my hotbar that I can use for combat now this room is cool um, because Tamriel the way that it's uh, designed ESO is um, it's not like a lot of MMOs in terms of each area in the game or each zone is level locked okay in ESO you can literally go to any zone at any time because the enemies and the content scales to your player level and that's cool for two reasons if you have for instance friends who play this game who maybe are um, much higher level than you and you're only level three it means that you can still play with your friends and you can still run through a zone together even though you might be 40 50 levels apart because it will scale to your level so it will scale to your level three it would scale to their level 50 and you both get equal amounts of XP and it just means that it's much easier for friends to play together you don't have to be uh, at the same level uh, which is really really cool so if you try you know if you've got um, like I say friends who have been playing it for a long time and you want to play with them and they want to show you the ropes then this is a really easy way for you to do that another core cool reason why uh, that level that level locking being removed is fantastic it means that you can choose where you want to start the game and that's what all these portals are now the game is huge absolutely huge there is loads and loads of content there's loads and loads of places that you can start and there's no pros and cons to any of them it's literally your choice so each one of these will take you to a different zone which is where you can start your game so you've got Kanathi's Roost Strauss Mackay loads and loads of different zones um, Bleak Rock Isle Vardenfell so I mean obviously you could do some research beforehand uh, if there's one particular zone that you wanted to start in but you can choose any one that you want at random I'm going to see if I can find the most recent one. That's Skyrim. Somerset Isle, that's probably my favourite. I love Somerset. That's my favourite zone. Um, elsewhere, so if you want to fight some dragons, uh, that's where you want to start in Elsewhere. Blackwood. And this must be High Isle over here. This is the most, yeah, this has got to be High Isle. Yeah, Hi Isle, this is the most recent expansion, so if you want to do the most recent content, this is where you could start here. Uh, but like I say, my favourite zone is Somerset, so I'm going to run over here and I'm going to choose to start my game to this portal. Somerset Isle, the ancestral home of all elves. Fair warning, our cousins in the Old Mary Dominion can be a prickly bunch, but our spies indicate something is amiss at the Crystal Tower. They need an outsider's perspective. Someone like you. So as you can see here, you do get a little bit of quest text before you choose it. So you can see whether it's something that you want to do. Um, I'm going to do it because I want to do the Queen's Decree. I love uh, Somerset. It's one of my favorite songs. It's absolutely beautiful. All over this coast, from Corbrand to Alamo. But then those vile creatures started swarming ashore. Ink is barely dried on the Queen's Decree and there are already more of you than I can count. I refuse to deal with one of the Queen's guests, especially not in my own home. And suddenly the ground opens, spewing water and strange creatures. The Order has detected a number of irregularities on Tamriel, small breaches in the fabric of time. I ask you to look into one threat, and you bring me a multitude. Rumors have reached the Queen, and she's concerned. Between strange geysers and sea monsters, this island is as bad as the continent. I love, I love Somerset. 
So that's the, basically the tutorial, and then this puts you straight into the game. I can't fight those monsters. I'm, the island sprung a leak. Run! And this would be your first quest. And so now you're in the actual open world of the game. And from here you can travel basically to anywhere. So if I just hit the map, so you can see here, this is the map. Um, and now it may not look that big, but it's actually huge. Okay, there is so much to do here. Now, I have a lot of add-ons running in this game. So a lot of the places that you can see here are marked on my map. When you open yours, if you're not running any add-ons, you won't be able to see any of these things. Okay, they, they won't appear as icons on your map. Now the key thing that you need to know when you start is uh, the way shrines. Okay, what a way shrine is, uh, because these save you lots of time and uh, they're worth knowing. So we're going to run down here now and I'm going to show you what a way shrine looks like. And I'm going to tell you what it does, okay, so why they're important. So this is this over here, this blue light thing over here, this little structure, this is a way shrine. Shimmerine discovered, as you can see there, Shimmerine Wayne Shrine. Now, you, wherever you see one of these uh, on the map, the, the structures kind of tend to look a little bit different, but they will all have this blue light in the middle of them. Um, click on it because these are your fast travel points. Um, so, the one that I have just unlocked, as you can see, is just over here. And uh, I, on my map, they are marked because of my add on. Uh, but you can see there's quite a few of them scattered all the way around. There's another one over here in the main city of Alanor. Um, so you want to collect those whenever you, they appear on your map because basically they're fast travel points so you can travel from one point to another. It does co cost you a small amount. Um, uh, it's free to travel through the, the Way Shrine network but if you want to, if you, for instance, if you are out in the world and you're thinking to yourself, right, I really want to go back to town, but I don't want to walk all the way back there. What you can do is you can open your map, you can click on any available way shrine that you've unlocked. And as you can see there, it would cost me 38 gold to travel to that way shrine. Uh, and it's another way that you can fast travel uh, when you're out in the wilderness and you don't want to run all the way back to a way shrine. Um, that's something that is handy for new players to know uh, because it just means that you can get around a lot quicker. So that is the introduction to um a very basic introduction to elder scrolls online and obviously there's a lot more to this game um i'm going to be making some more videos about um you know to introduce new players to things like um daily quests you know what you should be doing uh in order to make gold uh when you first start the game uh, i'll be introducing you to things like the crafting um how crafting works in the game and stuff like that in future videos so if that's something that you're interested in then obviously you can come back and watch those but like i say the game is free to play until the 16th of april so it's free to play on consoles xbox playstation and pc so it's worth a download and to give it a try uh, because you know you don't know until you try something whether you're going to like it and um, like i say i've introduced loads of people to this game over the years lots of people who thought oh i don't know if this game is for me you know i'm not really into mmos um, but they've they've all played it and uh, they played it for a very long time after that and they were quite surprised at how much they enjoyed it. This MMO is a casual MMO you can dip into and out of it at will um, and it's certainly not pay to win okay it's uh, there's no you don't have to pay to subscribe to play this game once you have bought the game itself you can play it as much as you like uh, you don't have to put another penny into it if you don't want to uh, it is not in any way pay to win okay um, so I just want to put that idea to bed straight away um, but I've had years of fun playing this game I still love it to this day and uh, you know I've played it for nine years and I'm going to continue to play it probably until the day they switch the servers off because I love it that much so I hope you give it a go and I hope that you found this video helpful and enjoy your adventures in Tamriel <laughs>